This program aims to find solutions to your medical queries. It seeks answers to common health problems that have been hounding you. We will help you out in finding answers to your medical concerns. Good evening everyone, I'm Angel Jacob and this is MedTalk, your weekly on-air health consultation here on the Solar News Channel. Most people think that you can only get sports injuries if you engage in full contact sports. If you do not exercise properly or try to do too much too soon, you may suffer from some of the most common sports injuries around. These injuries usually occur in the body's most vulnerable areas such as your knees, elbows, hips, ankles and shoulders. The most common cause of, um, of uh, injuries is usually due to repetitive trauma. Paulit-ulit nangyayari. No? And um, usually, of course, like those who do a lot of running, jumping, they may end up with knee pains. And of course, what you call your jumper's knee. It, if you're also doing a lot of running, the risk of ankle inversion or an ankle sprain is also there. Usually, it's brought about by lack of training, okay, that's the reason why athletes or persons who indulge in sports end up having injuries. A sports physician or an exercise therapist can also guide you in making the right decisions every time you exert pressure on your body. In general, of course, patients who have injuries, sports injuries, they are actually advised to undergo okay, physical rehabilitation, even the very basic ones. One thing is we can apply modalities, right, to of course facilitate recovery, especially swelling. So we can use like your ultrasound machine, we do have of course your cryotherapy to uh, facilitate of course healing process and relieve the pain. How can you avoid sports injuries? What should you do if you suffer an injury? How are sports injuries treated? Find out the answers tonight on MedTalk. And joining us tonight is Dr. Benigno Agbayani Jr., an arthroscopic and orthopedic surgeon and a sports medicine doctor from the Manila Doctors' Hospital. Also with us tonight is Dr. Isagani Leal, a musculoskeletal medicine specialist. You may join our discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. Good evening, Dr. Agbayani. Good evening, Dr. Leal. Welcome to MedTalk. Good evening. Good evening. First, let's get to know the nature of your practice. Uh, let's start with uh, Dr. Agbayani, arthroscopic and orthopedic surgeon. Please tell us about yeah, that. Our orthopedic surgeons are experts in uh, bones and joints. Uh, arthroscopic uh, procedure is a device where you can look into joints using a small incision. There's a one inch incision and you can look into a joint. And that is uh, how you use uh, minimally invasive surgery for fixing or diagnosing certain uh, problems of the joint. Mm -hmm. Has that been around for a while? Oh, what yes. Kind of uh, uh, as far back as 1960s. And it was an invention by the Japanese in the 1940s. Mm -hmm. And when did it, uh, when has it been practiced? Or how long has it been practiced here in the I Philippines? I think in the Philippines, this was uh, pioneered by Dr. Tony Rivera back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you for enlightening us, right. Doctor, on your practice. Mm -hmm. Dr. Leal, musculoskeletal specialist. Uh, musculoskeletal that. medicine is uh, a specialty, it's a sub-specialty uh, of rehabilitation medicine where it concentrates on the musculoskeletal pains like back pain, shoulder pains, and that includes uh, sports injuries. Mm -hmm. And our treatment is focused on the uh, conservative treatment and um, uh, minimally invasive image-guided interventions and the use of orthobiologic techniques like platelet rich plasma therapy. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to, well, thank you also, Dr. Leal, mm -hmm. for enlightening us on your practice, which brings us to, you've mentioned sports injuries. Doctors, what, what's a sports injury and how common is a sports injury? Dr. Leal, let's start with you. Well, uh, sports injury is uh, very common, no? especially sa mga direct contact sports. No? 
And uh, usually, it, of course, pag uh, kulang tayo sa preparation, kulang sa conditioning, strengthening. And uh, usually, um, pinapasok mo isang uh, sports na medyo kulang tayo sa preparation. Mm -hmm. So, kailangan talaga, no, before you engage in any sports activity, you have to be prepared mentally, physically, and emotionally as well, no? Dr. Agbayani. Yeah, I agree with the definition. Uh, certainly, if you get injured while doing a sports, you can say you had a sports injury, but it's not always the case, though. Uh, we would, uh, of course, say that there are certain injuries that you get more often mm -hmm. in uh, sports. Uh, and there, since there are so many different sports, uh, that would be a very big uh, pool of types of injuries. Mm -hmm. So these are sports injuries of, um, for this, the main reason you've mentioned that they are involved, these people who get these injuries are involved, involved in sports activities. Mm -hmm. Can you also get an injury similar to a sports injury but you're not, you did not engage in any sports activity? Correct, correct. Uh, of, yes, it is very possible. Uh, laborers, uh, people who, even vehicular accidents have uh, similar injuries to what sports or athletes get. Uh, however, athletes uh, are actually always in the brink of injury. Mm -hmm. They actually try to injure themselves a little bit to promote uh, strength oh. or endurance because that's how the body works. Okay. If you don't put stress on your body, it doesn't actually improve. So if you don't go into that brink of injury, you're, you become stagnant. Mm -hmm. so, but however, if you go past that level of injury, then that, that becomes uh, the, 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 the problem where you have an injury that requires rest or, 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 or therapy. Mm -hmm. And these injuries are brought about either by contact sports or non-contact sports. Yes, that's also interesting uh, uh, because there's some sports that are not contact and that you get, uh, and the most common form of that is the overuse injury, uh, where, for example, you, you run too much, you, mm -hmm. you jump too much, uh, you go beyond the, the healing capacity of your tendon, your cartilage, your muscle, and that's the kind of uh, injuries that we call a repetitive or recurrent or chronic types of injuries, and we see that very often among non-contact sports injuries. But even in the contact sports, of course, we see that. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Leal, uh, please uh, give us an idea of which are the contact sports at saka yung mga non-contact okay, sports. Okay, uh, we talk of uh, yung mga contact sports. Ito yung uh, direct face-to-face uh, uh, -face, uh, in contact with your opponents. No? Mm -hmm. uh, isa dito is yung pinakomon talaga yung uh, uh, ayon sa American research, lumabas yung pinakomon talaga na source ng contact sports injuries yung uh, ice uh, hockey, no? mm. wherein uh, there is, uh, um, yung movement doon is erratic, hindi mo makokontrol, yung speed na mo sa ice, sa ipagpalo, hindi na makokontrol. No? So number one talaga yan, pangalawa ka lang po yung rugby, na talagang contact sports, pangatlo po yung uh, mixed martial arts, at okay. pangapat yung boxing. Okay. So yun po yung mga cause talaga ng mga the contact sports. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is football considered a contact sport or a non-contact mm -hmm. sport? I, I think strictly, strictly speaking, it's not where, where uh, but however, there are incidental contacts because uh, I think it's a foul if you try to push someone mm -hmm. out, but of course, you, you will get into contact with them. Mm -hmm. Same holds true for basketball. Yes, yes, that's true. And since we're talking about the sports, football, basketball, you mm -hmm. mentioned uh, martial <clears throat> arts, there are a lot of injuries brought about by engaging in these kinds of sports activities. So what are the, the common sports injuries that um, our players or our athletes uh, face <laughs> or um, how do you call that uh, get maybe yeah. when, when they uh, engage in these very um, strenuous and um, uh, hard activities at the court or in the field <laughs> dr leal uh, usually mom in uh, uh, basketball no uh, the most uh, especially for those activities or sports that has uh, uh, needs uh, mobility no yung uh, lower extremities mobility isa dito yung sa basketball pinaka-common no usually nagkaroon ng mga knee injuries no so mm -hmm. any in injuries among the research na lumabas is uh, pinaka-common na knee injuries yung uh, medial collateral ligament Which? medial collateral ligament okay. ito po yung pinaka-common then uh, infrapatellar tendon 
Then, meron silang lobas doon yung anterior crochet ligament, ACL. ACL, yung pinaka-popular or popular pinaka -common, po, no? pinaka common ACL. Po. Then, yung meniscus tear followed by uh, other uh, structures ng knees. No? Mm -hmm. So, among them is ito yung uh, pinaka-common na mga uh, injuries uh, based doon sa uh, American research. Mm -hmm. Dr. Agbayani, uh, in your I, practice? I think in, in the local setting, uh, because basketball is still the most common sports, uh, sprains, uh, be it the, the ankle being the most common ones and mm -hmm. the knee. Uh, you even have uh, simple bruising, contusion, even lacerations are still considered part of the, the sports injuries. Mm -hmm. So those are part and parcel. Muscle strains, uh, ligamentous strains, tendinitis. Mm -hmm. You still see a lot of those in the Philippines. We'll get to know more about the uh, ligament strains, the tendinitis, the difference between a sprain and a strain. Dr. Agbayani, Dr. Leal, we'll talk more about uh, sports injuries when MedTalk returns. Did you know that sports injuries sustained by those who were 65 years old and above have significantly increased by as much as 50% in the last two decades? Most injuries were attributed to active involvement in numerous sporting activities such as biking, tennis, basketball, and jogging. back here on MedTalk and tonight we're talking about sports injuries. You may join our discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. <clears throat> now doctors, let's go through the most common injuries one by one. Sprains or ligament tears, um, ankle sprains, which um, before the break I was asking the boys, you know, they, they, <laughs> they, have, they, they you know, in, once in their, in their life uh, yeah. they've had this type of injury. And um, please tell us how you get it, um, what happens to our body when you have a sprain or a, a ligament tear. Dr. Leal? Uh, usually, po, pag sinabi natin sprain, it's uh, micro tears no? to a specific uh, uh, tender or ligaments. No? Uh, most common dito is yung tinatawag natin na uh, ATFL uh, uh, sprain or uh, ankle joint sprain. No? So usually, um, uh, nangyari ito pag merong uh, um, merong irregular uh, stability or irregular movement. For example, napakan mo yung, yung uh, foot na kasamaan mo. So, merong uh, inversion sprain. So, yun yung nangyari. No? Mm -hmm. So, under normal condition, dapat hindi nangyari yun unless na meron talagang mga accidental na nangyari. Mm -hmm. yeah. Usually, when you, you say sprain, uh, you actually refer to, to ligaments. And ligaments are what connect, connect bone to bone. Okay. So, for example, the fibula is connected to the uh, calcaneus so, or, or talus. So, so, those are bone to bone and it's a weight-bearing joint. So, if you twist it beyond the capacity of your ankle, you will, st you will either have those micro tears or sometimes even a complete tear. Mm -hmm. So, they're still classified as sprains. As compared to strains, when you say strain, you actually refer more to muscle. Mm -hmm. If, but, but similarly, there is that also what, ha what happens. You have micro tears of the muscle, and you can call that a, a strain or muscle strain. But of course, there are also cases of complete muscle tears. The most popular one is the gastrocnemius muscle, the, the calf muscle. The calf muscle, so, okay. Which sports um, activities would um, uh, have those give us or energy? have those Mo Mostly kinds sports of that would require jumping or turning or shifting directions. You would have lots of ankle sprains or knee sprains mm -hmm. or, or, or even muscle strains. Is there a way to avoid it? When you're playing sports, you're really into the game and you're so passionate about it. You want to get that score, but how can you at the same time think about right. landing uh, on the right foot uh, and landing properly? Mm. Dr. Lea. Uh, actually, mom, it's uh, proper conditioning, uh, strengthening of your muscles and tendons. Okay. Then, um, uh, uh, sometimes yung mga napakan yung kasama mo sa mga 
uh, foot nila, yun mga incidences yun eh. Uh, yeah, hindi yeah. na avoid. Things you can't really avoid. You can't avoid them. Them. Sometimes, uh, yeah. even if you want to avoid, they come to you. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that's a problem. Uh, ano pa ba? <laughs> So if they come to you and it becomes a problem, and now you have to treat yeah. it, now um, you have to address it, what are the first um, uh, if steps If I may, I, I, I forgot to mention something about preparation. Oh, preparation, right. yes, please. Because actually it's a big issue about warm-up yes. and stretching. Uh, we do recommend that uh, before you participate in any sports, you, you warm up, which mm -hmm. you either do jumping jacks, you run in place, slow jog. And you can do that for one or two minutes or even a little more. Mm -hmm. So once your body's warm up, then you start stretching. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to stretch a cold muscle, then you, you will get more injuries as compared to a warm muscle. Mm -hmm. And that also seems to prepare not only the ligaments, the muscles, but even the, the nerves. Mm -hmm. So if you're prepared, if your muscles, nerves, and, and, uh, ner yeah. and tendons or, or ligaments are prepared, you, mm -hmm. you will have less injuries in that way. Okay. So, I guess your next question is, uh, what if you already have what if you, yeah. Yes, what if you already, you know, you warmed up for two minutes, you wore the proper gear, right, you, right. You, mm -hmm. you have a very good, uh, you have very good sleeping habits, your stress levels are low, you know, all these factors uh, contribute to, to a healthy sports activity, but right, right. kung hindi talaga maiiwasan, what is the first thing that we should do? Uh, court side po, uh, at the time of the injury, meron tayong ginagamit ng mnemonics, yung tatawag natin na RICE. R-I-C-E. Okay. R-I-C-E. -E. No? So uh, R stands for the rest. So you have to stop uh, running or jumping. You have to rest. Then uh, apply uh, cold compress or ice. Mm -hmm. That's ice. I. Then uh, compress. You can uh, press it with uh, or put an immobilizer or a bandage. Then um, elevate no? so that there will be uh, lower circulation in that area of the injury. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the that's first a, 24 yeah. hours that's after a, the injury? Mm. That's Within a very good, hours. very good mnemonic to use, mm. not just for sprains, but uh, almost for every traumatic injury. Even uh, you get a head in injury, you do the same thing. Uh, perhaps just you elevate. It's already elevated, so mm -mm. you don't have to do that. Yes, uh, so, so it, it, the lower extremities. Right. And that there's remember. that concept about ice. The reason we put uh, ice is because it actually prevents the swelling. Uh, what happens if you have a micro tear is you have small vessels which are broken up and if you put cold compress in it, the, it will constrict, therefore prevent more bleeding, prevent uh, mm -hmm. swelling in that way. Mm -hmm. And the ideal uh, application of ice is uh, 20 minutes every two hours uh, for the period of 48 hours. Then after okay. that, you shift to warm compress. Okay, what does the warm compress do as opposed to the, uh, the cold compress in a situation like that? Uh, warm compress will enhance the circulation and thus uh, it also enhances healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can't play uh, shortly after um, uh, an injury like that. No? Others kasi they'll say, hindi kaya ko pa. It depends. Okay. It's, a, it's a good thing to ask no? kasi kaya pa ba? How do you really know? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Sometimes it depends on wh where are you, championship game, are you preliminary, some, okay. so sometimes they really have to play. Uh -oh. uh, how bad is the injury? So that's uh, an issue also that you should tackle. Is it really so bad that uh, it's so swollen that there could be a fracture that if you try to play then you add more injury? Mm -hmm. So that's, that becomes an issue when, when it comes to sports injuries. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, okay, yes, uh, sometimes if uh, the player has uh, an active role or a very important role in the play, so kailangan niya talaga maglaro. Then sometimes we put some uh, interventions like uh, uh, we inject yung mga homeopathic based na mga injectables yeah. just to mm -hmm. relieve the pain, then uh, put into immob uh, restrictive movements like tapings and uh, bandaging. Mm -hmm. Like an example, in the World Cup football, you know, yes. Yari K. Neymar. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, he, he was hit in the run. back. So right there and there, of course, it's a, it's a very dangerous area. He was in severe pain. Yes. No one would really think, can you still play right there and there? And, uh, because it's such a dangerous area. Mm -hmm. But if he had a sprain, probably we would say, sure, we'll still try it because it's, it is the World Cup. Yes. So and that becomes an issue in sports. You mentioned like a championship and uh, parang his, his, well, his team was rooting for him. Yeah, sometimes even the, the moral support that that gives the team where uh, despite the pain you still want to play, sometimes it, it could be uh, possible, but mm -hmm. uh, most doctors will say, let's play it safe. Mm -hmm. So these, these injuries or the pain that um, an athlete suffers is just concentrated in one area. 
when there's a strain or a sprain. A tear is the same muscle muscle tear. Uh, which area is uh, affected, and does it does it um, um, does it go up all the way, or does it go down all the way? It's not just in one area. Right. Most injuries, of course, will be localized, uh, except if it were a nerve injury. A nerve okay. injury would usually migrate or, 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 or uh, move to, to some other places. Sometimes you feel it in the foot, but actually it's in the back. Okay. So, how, how, yeah. What is the definition exactly of a, well, a nerve, uh, the literal, it's a nerve, no? It's a nerve mm. um, injury. Yeah. So you said it, it resonates. Yeah, so it's how would you If you have a slip disc, which can even happen in sports, the symptoms would be either uh, weakness or pain. Of the limb or the of the leg, okay. so those are cases where it's not localized. Mm -hmm. But in general, uh, muscle strains would be in the muscular areas of our Only. body, mm -hmm. and and ankle sprains or ligament uh, sprains are in the joints near the joints, mm -hmm. uh, and likewise, uh, cartilage injuries, meniscus injuries are of course found in the all joints. Mm -hmm. So when uh, these injuries are found in the joints, um, do you have to stop uh, playing that particular sport <laughs> or can you go back after 48 hours, the cold compress, the hot compress? Do you need to go to, uh, doctor. to see a doctor, a musculoskeletal uh, specialist or, or um, the orthopedic surgeon yeah. right away? As a, as a general rule, we, the patient can actually say that I'm in severe pain, I can't even walk then you should really see a doctor. Sometimes a, an athlete will have a little pain, and my rule is if it's still painful on the third day, mm -hmm. you should see a doctor. Okay. But if it's already getting better on the second and third day, maybe it's just a, 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 your body can heal it itself. Okay. So you, you don't really have to see a doctor. These are rule of thumbs. It's not always true, but uh, mm -hmm. it can apply. Uh, for me, being a specialist in uh, musculoskeletal ultrasound, uh, right mm -hmm. away on the court, mm -hmm. I am bringing my portable ultrasound. Okay. And I can see in the ultrasound if the patient has a complete tear of the uh, sprain. So I can see you cannot play anymore or it will damage the peripheral soft tissues. Mm -hmm. Or if it has only 10% or 50%, then we can put an uh, uh, to restrict your movement, then you can play. Okay, so right there and then you can distinguish or you can um, put the player at ease if he can still play or yes, he has exactly. to get out so, of the game uh, already. So that's mm -hmm. also the importance of uh, uh, ultrasound, uh, mm -hmm. diagnostic ultrasound. Mm -hmm. This is in reference to the athletes. What about those who work out? Uh, we have a lot of uh, workout yeah, activities yeah. which involve pressure, which involve jumping as well, yes, yeah. and, and exerting effort on our back. Um, yeah, relatively, going to the gym is uh, considered safe. But you do get lots of pain, right? You, you get uh, muscle pain, mm -hmm. you get some joint pains. Uh, the rule still follows. If you have uh, pain uh, three days that does not improve, you should see a doctor. Mm -hmm. But there's this concept of no pain, no gain. Yes. So that's often heard. And actually, in a way, it is true. But it depends, again, on how much pain. And if that pain doesn't go better in about three days. There's this thing called the delayed onset muscle soreness. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually a kind of injury where you have pain the following day. Okay. And that's because you have micro tears of the muscle. And it doesn't swell up. You don't feel it immediately because you have all these hormones while exercising. The following day is so painful. And that's because you're not used to the exercise. So it's like uh, your body not well prepared for it. Mm -hmm. In a way, it's not so bad, but uh, we, we would prefer a different kind of uh, injury, not, not that much. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's considered a, a very minor injury. So if it's a minor injury, uh, Dr. Leal, um, then no need to get in touch with, with the, the doctor uh, right away. If uh, it's a minor injury and uh, the athlete needs to go back to uh, his play immediately, uh, there are some uh, techniques that uh, we apply. Uh, it's, uh, if it's partial tear only, there's no need for surgery. We have some tech new techniques now that uh, we will be able to return the athletes to play immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah, in reference, yeah, doctor, to the athletes, to, the mga, athletes. to those who work out lang sa so, so gym and um, to those na baka nagkamali lang ng buhat yeah. or, you know, that happens eh, or yeah. nagmali lang ng bagsak. So, mm -hmm. 
how do they um, address that? Yeah, my, my rule pa rin is two days rest. Same pa rin. If you're improving, you can go back. In fact, we don't actually advise complete rest. In fact, you go to work, you, you move around. That, that even seems to help uh, recovery as well. Oh, okay, so it's not true na uh, if you're injured because you worked out, dapat you have to rest. You can't move around kasi baka lalong mamaga that area of your body uh, which was injured. In, in those cases where it's really severely swollen, uh, I was uh, referring, for example, you have muscle pain. Yes. You don't really have to be absent from work you know, mm -hmm. if you have muscle pain. You can have even back pain. A lot of people experience back pain. It is, in fact, the most common uh, mm -hmm. consult for outpatient. Okay. And you, and you can go to work. It also depends on what work you do, of course. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Dr. Maybe, Liam? Um, there is a misinterpretation with the rest. No? Rest means uh, you try to rest your uh, ankle, not necessarily na you have to rest from your work. Okay. So it's just <laughs> resting that particular body part na na injure, yes. hindi yung buong katawan mo, because exactly. you still yes. have to go to work. And, yes. and, right? and professional athletes, uh, if you injure your ankle, they go to practice, do other things. Mm -hmm. They swim, mm. they lift weights for their upper body. So resting should happen when you sleep. Okay. Now there's an issue about that. And some th say, I'm young, I, I don't have to sleep. I can exercise tomorrow and then party all night. Uh, you must remember, you don't actually uh, go stronger while you exercise. You get stronger when you sleep. Mm -hmm. So your, your recovery, your repair happens during sleep, not during the exercise. Okay. So doctors, um, we'll talk more about sports injuries. Will you help us get to understand more about them, help us avoid these sports injuries and um, get the proper treatment if we do suffer one. All that and more when MedTalk returns. Growing up, Dylan Ababu always loved to compete with the game's best players. I was 6 years old, I was really excited to play basketball. I was always playing in the canto. When I was 7, I told myself that I wanted to play PBA. So I was playing for a day, a day. When I was 9-10 years old, I told myself that I wanted to play NBA. So that's what my goal was ever since. At that young age, my mindset was that. That's why I was always playing. He was a UAAP Most Valuable Player, a top-notch national team member, and an up-and-coming professional basketball cager. But like many other athletes, the game's speedy twists and turns can put excessive pressure to the body, leading to physical agony and sports injuries. Actually, dati nag injury ko lang, broken nose, saka broken din yung dito ko. Pero sa legs, wala. Pero nung uh, second year ko sa PBA, uh, yan, uh, nagka-ACL ako, ACL injury sa right knee. So mga 8 months ako nawala, so talaga unforgettable siya kasi talagang nagsimula ako from scratch. Saka masakit talaga siya, nagkaroon ako ng surgery, gano'n. So yun, kumaga back to zero talaga ako, kaya unforgettable siya. The injury sidelined him for a year, but today, Dylan has slowly but surely recovered and has returned to the hard court to play the game he loves the most. We're back here on Med Talk, still talking about sports injuries. You may join the discussion by calling our hotline at 548-4678. Doctors, the case of Dylan Ababu, um, promising basketball career. He mentioned that he broke his nose and he had an um, injury also on his arm. And then his, the, knee. his knee, ACL. What exactly is an ACL? And um, it's an um, athlete's nightmare no? to get it, that. It's a ligament connecting the tibia to the femur. And it's called the anterior cruciate ligament. And its uh, role is to prevent the, the leg from shifting forward and also corrects, uh, prevents the excessive rotation okay yeah. so and if you tear the anterior cruciate ligament 
every time you try to step on it and shift away from it, it will buckle out or it tends to be unstable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, professional basketball players, if cannot play well, mm -hmm. if you have anterior cruciate ligament tear, that's why uh, it goes into the news if a big time player like Dylan Ababu, Derek Rose would tear it. It, it is a career threatening uh, injury, mm -hmm. but it is no longer ending. So that's the good news about it. Mm -hmm. because uh, we now can easily repair these tears. And there are so many good doctors in the Philippines who can do very good surgery for anterior cruciate ligament tears. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the one that's being shown right now is actually the patellar tendon. Okay. That is not the anterior cruciate ligament tear. The anterior cruciate ligament tear is the inner part. It's right in the middle. Okay. And if you go and open up the knee from the front, you would see it there. And that's, there you can see it, it's cut. cut uh, but that, that's how you, you, you tear it if you, you dislocate your knee a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens often, the most common cause, is when you plant your foot and then you turn away or, or shift directions. Uh, and that puts a lot of strain on the ACL. Uh, I think if you also do a lot of those shake and bake moves, mm -hmm. that also put, puts a lot of strain on the ACL. Mm -hmm. So that's why we get it often in basketball. Uh, Dr. Leal, in your experience, you mentioned pag nasa court, no? Tapos okay. may nai-injure. You mm -hmm. say there's an ultrasound. In, in, in uh, Dylan's case, um, instantaneous yung pain like Dr. Agbayani mentioned, mm -hmm. no? Nararamdaman ba kaagad ng, ng player yan? Is, do you hear a pop? Do you know that it has been um, injured? Uh, usually the player uh, feel the pop, no? Uh, then uh, suddenly, uh, uh, hindi siya nakaka-feel kaagad ng pain. Mm -hmm. But parang may na feel siya na parang wobbly or parang uh, instability sa niya. So the tendency is uh, he stop, then uh, ask for the help. Then uh, the role of the ultrasound here is um, uh, to see if there is an injury. But ultrasound actually uh, will not see the uh, ACL injury because it's deep inside the knee. Mm -hmm. So the best uh, diagnostic uh, procedure for ACL injury is uh, through MRI. Okay. But uh, we have uh, new uh, diagnostic imaging now. We call this, this uh, diagnoscopy. It's like a needle, but there's a camera at the tip mm -hmm. where you inject inside, and you can see, you can record the uh, inside of your knee. If there, is, if there is a egg uh, complete rupture or partial tear of the ACL. Mm -hmm. yeah. So based on the, um, the video of and, and what Dylan was saying, um, Six, eight months, six to eight months, yata siyang yes, nagpahinga. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That means it was a very bad injury. Is, yeah. is that right? Uh, it, it means that the tear was significant enough to be operated on. Uh, professional athletes in general should get surgery because uh, no amount of strengthening the knee can allow you to play at a competitive level unless you have surgery for the anterior cruciate ligament. Mm -hmm. Uh, however, even the anterior cruciate ligament, when reconstructed, it cannot be as strong as the original. It's around 85% the strength of the original ACL ligament. So it will still require some strengthening preparation before he gets back to play. And that often is at least six months. And I think in this case, it took a About year. About eight, yeah, a year. So, yeah. And the procedure is done arthroscopically. Uh, Dr. Leal mentioned there's a way to diagnose it, but yes. uh, in most cases, in the general population, what we do is uh, do a good examination. Uh, a good examination by an experienced doctor can actually diagnose an ACL. What is difficult to diagnose is the partial tear of the ACL, because sometimes it feels stable, but the rotational instability cannot be felt. So what is done, if there's doubt, is you do an MRI. Uh, magnetic resonance imaging, where you, it uses uh, magnetic waves to, to show both bone, cartilage, ligaments, muscles, and even water could be seen in the knee. Mm -hmm. And uh, more or less, it could diagnose it. But again, it is not a uh, gold standard. Uh, what Dr. Leal was mentioning is actually even better than that. However, it is invasive that you still have to make an incision, correct? No? You still have oh, to make yes, an incision. Yes, a little incision. And the same way with arthroscopy, we still have to make an incision, put in the scope, and verify my examination, the MRI reading, verify if there is a tear or not. 
because uh, there have been cases, uh, quite a uh, significant percentage of MRI would say na there is a tear mm -mm. or there is no tear, mm -hmm. but the patient has symptoms. And they're saying uh, there's a tear and then we look inside the knee and we find there's no tear. What, what do you do uh, if there's no tear? How do you um, uh, proceed uh, from well, there? Well, the good thing about it is if, if you did a good examination and there is really is pain, you will find something. But that's a great, great, great thing about arthroscopy or the, the technique mentioned by Dr. Lear is that you can really see it and make an accurate diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's really foolhardy to, to, to try to fix something that's not broken. Yes. No, and a good uh, accurate diagnosis is essential for sports medicine. Mm -hmm. So um, in Dylan's case, going back to uh, Dylan, very young, uh, does age also play a role in, in um, the rehabilitation, in the healing process of, of his knee? Uh, Dr. Liel. Uh, usually, ma'am, uh, uh, to hasten or to uh, 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 the healing process, no? Para mas pabilis. Mm -hmm. Usually, we, na, meron kami ina-apply na yun ng orthobiologic techniques. So, we call this the uh, PRP or platelet rich plasma therapy. Then, uh, the patient undergo what we call the uh, laser therapy three times a week. Mm -hmm. That is to induce the healing process. Then, uh, we have the new machine. Uh, which we put to the, you know, to the uh, oxygenation of the patient, which we put the patient into 5,000 feet of sea level. Okay. It's to equivalent to 15% to of oxygenation uh -huh. because there's a recent study that if you will put the patient, the injured patient, into the uh, low oxygen level, the tendency is there will be an enhance of the circulation in the injured part. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and that will help in... Uh, the healing process yeah. and will deliver the uh, growth factors, stem cells. Uh -huh this into the area of the injury. Oh, nice. is, is it the same as hyperbaric? Uh, hy this, is, this one is hypobaric. Hypo. Hypo. Hypobaric. Where we meaning? put the patient to low oxygen level. Okay. So putting the patient into low oxygen levels will, will help in the growth of the cells and in the healing process. Yes, uh, because uh, based on the uh, autonomic nervous system, if, there is, if it detects that there is a low oxygenation, the tendency is the blood vessels will dilate and thereby it increases the circulation, mm -hmm. especially in the area of the injury. Thereby it delivers all the growth factors in the area of the injury. Okay, so now that the, the area of the injury has uh, healed, he can now go back to playing, yeah. and um, the uh, <laughs> chances of uh, it being injured again yeah. or injuring any yeah. other body part. Right. Could, could I just make a point about yes. the anterior cruciate ligament? If you tear it, it will not heal by itself. Okay. That must be clarified because some people think, if I wait, what if I wait five years? Maybe my tear will heal. Mm -hmm. Go uh, back to normal, right. you mean? The, and the anterior cruciate ligament, like the posterior cruciate ligament, are ligaments inside the joint. And the thing about the tissues inside the joint is they don't actually scar. Mm. We don't want scar in the joint because mm -hmm. if it does scar, then you will have a stiff joint every time it gets injured. So if you have a tear of the ligament, the body will not try to repair it well enough for it to actually work like your original ligament. That's why we have to do surgery and replace it. I, Dr. Lear is mentioning the part where we already put the graft in. Yes. And we want the graft to take well. So that must be clarified because some people think that mm -hmm. uh, I could wait. And then, in fact, you should not wait because if you wait, then you can't play. Your muscles start to shrink. You even forget how to play basketball, mm -hmm. and then you decide after five years to play, to have your surgery, mm -hmm. because it has not healed. So that's a very important point. Because mm -hmm. other people think that it's self-healing. No. So that it will go the, back to its normal function. That's the trouble with the cartilage and things that are inside the joint. Uh, it, it will not scar, it will not repair well. Mm -hmm. Dr. Agbayani, Dr. Liel, we'll talk more about sports injuries when MedDoc returns. Did you know that men get sports injuries at least twice as much as women? This is because there are more male-dominated sports out there with most requiring aggressive movements and attitudes normally exhibited by men.
We're back here on Med Talk, still talking about sports injuries. This time, doctors, Dr. Agbayani, Dr. Liel, we have a question from Facebook. If my knees and shoulders make a popping sound when I move, when I move it a certain way, do I need to see a doctor even if it doesn't hurt? Okay. As a general rule, you don't have to if it's not painful. Uh, joints do make popping sounds if you try to sublux it a little bit. Yes. Uh, it's called cavitation. That's when you have a no space, suddenly you create a space. Uh, a gas forms and makes a sound. In itself, it's not uh, an injury. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, uh, the reason why uh, there is a popping sound the knee is that there is what we call the patellar ball tracking. Okay. Your patella should be in the center, but sometimes if there is an equal uh, spasm or pull of your quads muscle, there is a lateralization of your patella, where your patella will stay on the lateral side. Okay. Then if you move flexion extension of your knee, it rubs against the lateral femoral condyle and that sometimes it causes the popping sound. Mm -hmm. so, or clicking. Or yeah. clicking. But that's okay, no cause for alarm. If it's not painful, I, okay. I suppose you're not, you shouldn't be too alarmed. Okay. But uh, yeah, when the pain sets in and changes the way you play, you should mm -hmm. see a doctor. Okay, like earlier I was going this, like this and I heard a popping sound. <laughs> Maybe I need to stretch. <laughs> Good thing you're, you're here for, beside for me. For example, if you were seated in a long, long, a long time, yes. then you stand up. Yes. And the reason for that is because you haven't moved your joint. There's not yet enough fluid. There's not enough. So, so you really have to sometimes warm it up. Mm. And, and unfortunately, the older we get, that fluid doesn't go out as fast as when you were younger. Yes. So it tends to pop as we, or click as mm. we move from a non-moving position to a moving position. Okay. Doctors, this time a question from Twitter. Can weight lifting cause perpetual back problems? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> it depends <laughs> on what. Because it's a very general. Uh, okay. No. Mm. I think if you do the technique in, in, in wrongly, wrongly, then yeah, it will cause back problems. If you do it too fast, if you mm. try to improve too fast, as a general rule, uh, ten percent per week improvement is what you should follow. As a general rule, mm. rule what what do I mean by that? Uh, if you're lifting fifty pounds now, and you're doing it three times a week and then you expect to lift 100 pounds next week, yes. then you will get injuries. As a rule, just add five pounds a week. And if you still find it too difficult, then move back again. Mm -hmm. So that's how to avoid uh, injuring your back, the 10% rule per week. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't just apply, Dr. Agbayani, Dr. Liel, to our athletes, no? The workers or, or those who have jobs which require them to keep moving their back or bending forward, picking up something. No? Oh, mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, there are bad habits at work. Prolonged sitting is a bad habit. And of mm -hmm. course, that's not a sports injury, mm -hmm. but it is a, what, what you call this uh, work hazard. Occupational related. Yes, okay. so yes, yes, you should try to stay fit. Mm -hmm. uh, you should actually stand up once in a while, uh, move around. Uh, it is recommended that every hour, you try to get a two-minute break just to stretch. So these are for people who sit a lot, you know, like like me and like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like everyone. Also on the plane, no, I just it just came to mind when you're on the plane and you've been sitting down for a long time. Mm -hmm. It's also good to just walk around and yeah, and stretch yeah. your body, mm -hmm. warm your body up. No, Doctor Liel, you mentioned earlier the new technologies. You were talking about ultrasound uh, when it comes to diagnosing all these. Um, uh, sports injuries. What are the other new technologies or new techniques that, uh, that you apply? Okay, so since from diagnostics, we use the ultrasound and uh, in the diagnoscopy, the needle size uh, mm -hmm. uh, diagnostics tool. We also have the uh, new techniques on, uh, to, uh, to enhance the healing process, no? like uh, the ACL tear. Uh, we can cut up to four months or five months by uh, using the new technology, like uh, we use the platelet wherein we will uh, extract blood from the patient, okay. then concentrate the platelet, and inject it inside the, uh, the injury. Then okay. it will help the attract growth factors mm -hmm. and stem cells. Then it will enhance also the healing process. Then we also use the laser therapy to induce the healing. Then after that, uh, we have a new uh, uh, facility now. We call this the altitude simulator 
we're in the uh, athlete, injured athlete, we put it into the uh, small cubicle wherein we will be able to uh, regulate the oxygen saturation inside. Like if you are running into 10,000 or 20,000 feet above sea level by modulating the oxygen inside. Mm -hmm. So if we will put the patient into 15% uh, 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 of the oxygen instead of 100, there is what we called, I was what I've told you before, that there is an increase in the oxygenation. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in two to three weeks time, we will be able to make the patient run by using the, what we call the technology, the Alter G uh, treadmill. Alter G. Alter G. It's a treadmill, treadmill, no? Wherein you will be able to uh, um, alter your weight by uh, adjusting to 10% of your body weight only that you will uh, uh, put into your knees. 10%, mm -hmm. 20%, 50%, 50%, no? So even though you're injured, you can still walk by not putting a weight into your knee. Oh, okay. So the earlier the patient will ambulate, the earlier is the recovery. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, he described the uh, high altitude uh, training, but instead of going to Baguio, you, you can just go You can there. just go here. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But again, it's mm -hmm. more fun to go to Baguio, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's an immediate need, you can go to <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> But uh, these new technologies, um, how, how old uh, or how, how long have uh, these been used here in, in the country and um, uh, the effectivity and um, what are the athletes' um, comments, reactions oh. to this kind of therapy? Uh, this technology, I'm like the altitude simulator, the use of the uh, uh, Alter-G is very new. It is only around a month. In the country. Oh, it's only a month. But the use of the ultrasound okay. for musculoskeletal and the use of diagnoscopy, um, uh, we started in, in 2009. Okay. And um, there have been athletes who have. Um, uh, yes, uh, there have been a lot of athletes that kind of already uh, received this kind of treatment, like the platelet that's from your own blood. Mm -hmm. Then inject it into the exact location of the injury. For example, if you have shoulder injury, muscle injury, tendon tear, ACL tear, or ligaments tear whichever part of your body. And they're ultrasound guided. We have to look at that injury, that inject the platelet. Yes. Then we will put the patient into immobilization for two weeks. So how long after these new technologies can the athlete uh, play again or engage uh, in their favorite sport? Yes. Uh, if the patient is not a surgical case, uh, for example, partial tear only, no, uh, we, will, we can put the patient into uh, five weeks uh, return to play. Mm -hmm. How about the non-athletes who suffer similar injuries? Um, they can also... Um, avail of that. Avail of the, <laughs> the, the kind of technologies that yes, you mentioned, uh, Dr. Leon. Yes, they can uh, avail of it. But uh, the problem is uh, it's a, lit, a little bit expensive. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes, hindi naman nila kailangang magumadali. Okay. They have all the time. Unlike at least that you have to come back to immediately to your play. Correct. Sometimes it, it costs a million pesos for oh. an athlete not to return for a week. Yes. Mm. yes. They, they get paid big salaries, so mm. days would matter. Mm -hmm. So, but with, with regards to new technology, we should also be hold some caution also. Not all new technologies mean good technologies or that they work. So always get the advice of your doctor or people that you can trust in that field because they would know more about uh, how, how it has uh, been scrutinized in the scientific community. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems to be always exciting to try new things. Yes. But uh, it is costly too. It may not do harm, but uh, the cost could, be, could affect the, the other things, mm -hmm. the, the health economics, so to speak. That's right. It could harm your pocket. <laughs> it could injure your pocket. Right, right. So you that should... should be another topic. We can have yeah. that as another topic. Yeah. But for now, um, we have no more time. Uh, Dr. Arbayani, a parting message? Well, sports medicine is one of those things that would require uh, science and team approach. Uh, so get the advice of your, the experts. Uh, uh, it, it, is, it requires, like the, the German football team, it requires team approach, and that's the winning formula. Yes, yes. Thank you, Dr. Agbayani. Dr. Liel? So, uh, as what I, as, uh, Dr. To Agbayani told before, that if you have uh, musculoskeletal pains or sports injuries, that does not change within two days, you have to seek a consult of a specialist. Mm -hmm. Thank you once again, Dr. Liel and Dr. Agbayani for educating us on sports injuries, how to avoid them, how to treat them, and um, how to... Um, warm up properly, proper diet, and um, to exercise with caution 
at all times. And to play, uh, be a good player, be a good sport, and uh, take care of your body while you're at it. Yeah. We'll see you again next Tuesday, 7 p.m. on your scheduled on-air consultation here on the Solar News Channel. I'm Angel Hakob. Good night.